Today on MTG Unpacked, we're taking a look at the new Innistrad Crimson Veil Commander Deck Vampiric Bloodline. So this is in the Rakdos colours, that is red and black. Here we have Strephan Mora Progenitor, and they used to have a, a plastic window on the front of the box, but they don't do that anymore. So saving on packaging, very good. Invite them in, I think that's probably a bad idea. We got a 100 card deck with 15 new cards, deck box, 10 double sided token cards, life wheel, strategy insert and reference cards. So without further ado, let's get into it. So they do have a pull tab here on the bottom. There we go. And let's slide out the deck. And you can see here it's just printed on there. We do have some little tokens there. Use these as counters or victory confetti. Alright, and a very cool deck box. Let's check it out. So we have a bunch of stuff in here. So here is the life wheel, I think. This thing's going up to... Let's see here, we've got 20. Yeah, 20 on one side and... Yeah, up to 40 on the other. Okay. And we'll take a look here at this flyer. So this will tell us a bit about the deck. Vampiric Bloodline. So here are some tips for how to play the deck. And we've got Commander Rules. There is Strefan. And on the other side, here he is, Strefan Mora, Progenitor, floating up there. Alright, so we will take a look at the deck now. So is this one you're planning to pick up or you've got your eye on something else? Leave a note in the comments. Okay, so we'll get into this. And separating out the lands, so we've got a bunch of lands here. We'll take a look at those closer to the end of the video. Basics and tokens. Ah, I'll separate that out as well. So we do have this uh, display commander card. So this is a thicker than normal card. This is replacing the oversized cards they used to have, but it's still a foil. And then if we look at the regular size card here, we have Strephan Mora Progenitor, Legendary Creature Vampire Noble. It's a mythic. 3-2 for 4 with flying at the beginning of your end step, create a blood token for each player who lost life this turn. And whenever Strefan attacks, you may sacrifice two blood tokens. If you do, you may put a vampire card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. It gains indestructible until end of turn. Okay, so this deck is going to be using a ton of blood tokens and has vampires in it, as you might guess. We've got Timothar, Baron of Bats. So another legendary foil here. It's another mythic. Legendary creature vampire noble 4-4 four, four for 6. Has ward. Discard a card. Whenever another non-token vampire you control dies, you may put pay 1 and exile it. If you do create a 1-1 one, one black bat creature token with flying, it gains when this creature deals combat damage to a player, sacrifice it and return the exiled card to the battlefield tapped. Okay, so we have two commanders there. Next up we have Blood Tithe Harvester Creature Vampire 3-2 for 2. So when it enters the battlefield, create a blood token. And in case you're not aware, that's an artifact with pay one tap, discard a card, sacrifice this artifact, you get to draw a card. And if you tap, tap sack this one, target creature gets negative X, negative X until end of turn where X is twice the number of blood tokens you control, activate only as a sorcery. That is a mouthful. Next up we have Ancient Craving, Sorcery for 4. You draw 3 cards and you lose 3 life. Fairly straightforward. Blood Artist, Creature, Vampire, 0-1 for 2. Whenever Blood Artist or another creature dies, target player loses 1 life and you gain 1 life. That is very cool. Bloodline Necromancer, Creature, Vampire, Wizard, 3-2 for 5 with lifelink. And when Bloodline Necromancer enters the battlefield, you may return target vampire or wizard creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. And some pretty gruesome artwork on that one. Falcon Wrath Noble, creature vampire noble, 2-2 two, two for 4 with flying. Whenever it or another creature dies, target player 
loses one life and you gain one life. Okay, so we've got a bunch of those, I think. Feed the swarm, sorcery for two, destroy target creature or enchantment and opponent controls. You lose life equal to that permanence mana value. Indulgent Aristocrat, creature vampire noble, one one for a single black lifelink. Pay two, psychic a creature, put a plus one plus one counter on each vampire you control. We've got Knight's Whisper, Sorcery for two, you draw two cards and lose two life. Okay, so you do get some card draw out of it at least. Urge to Feed, instant for two, target creature gets minus three, minus three, and two end of turn. You may tap any number of untapped vampire creatures you control. If you do, put a plus one plus one counter on each of those vampires. So we're going to see a bunch of things that take advantage of having vampires here. We've got a Vampire Knight Corp. Creature Vampire Shaman 2-3 for 3, Flying, Death Touch, and Lifelink. Rakish Air Creature Vampire 2-2 two, two for 3, Whenever a Vampire you control deals combat damage to a player, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. Stentia Masquerade Enchantment for 3, Attacking Creatures you control have First Strike. And whenever a Vampire you control deals combat damage to a player, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. It also has Madness for 2 and a red, so if you discard this card, discard it into Exile when you do. Cast it for its madness cost or put it into your graveyard. Then we've got Vandal Blast. Sorcery for a single red. Destroy target artifact you don't control. Has overload for four and a red. You may cast a spell for its overload cost. If you do, change its text by replacing all instances of target with each. Brutal. Rakdos Charm. Instant for two. Choose one. Exile all cards from target player's graveyard. Destroy target artifact. Each creature deals one damage to its controller. Stromkirk Captain Creature Vampire Soldier 223 with First Strike. Other vampire creatures you control get plus one plus one and have First Strike. That is pretty crazy. Arcane Signet, we'll probably see this in the other deck as well. Artifact for two. Tap to add one mana of any colour in your commander's colour identity. Charcoal Diamond Artifact for two. Enters battlefield tapped. Tap it for black. Commander Sphere Artifact for 3, tap to add 1 mana of any colour in your Commander's colour identity. And if you sacrifice it, you get to draw a card. You'll see that one in quite a few Commander decks. We've got the Fire Diamond Artifact for 2, enters battlefield tap, tap it for red. Rakdos Signet Artifact for 2, 1 tap, and as the name suggests, tap it for black and red. And what deck would be complete without a Soul Ring Artifact for 1? Tap to add two colorless mana. You'll pretty much see that one and this one in just about every commander deck. Swift Foot Boots, Artifact Equipment for two. Equipped Creature as Hexproof and Haste, equip it for one. Unstable Obelisk, Artifact for three. Tap for colorless for seven. Tap, suck it, destroy target permanent. We've got a Command Tower, you'll see this quite a bit. A land, tap to add one mana of any color in your commander's color identity. Myriad Landscape. Okay, so we do have some lands chucked in the middle here. Enters Battlefield tapped. Tap it for colorless for two taps. Sack it. Search your library for up to two basic land cards that share a land type. Put them onto the Battlefield tapped, then shuffle. We've got the Path of Ancestry. Another land enters tapped. Tap to add one mana, mana of any color in your commander's color identity. And when that mana is spent to cast a creature spell that shares a creature type with your commander, scry one. So, of course, you're going to be uh, casting tons of vampires with this one. Rakdos Carnarium land enters tap. When it enters battlefield, return a land you control to its owner's hand. Tap for black and red. Tainted Peak, another land. Tap for colorless. Tap to add black or red. Activate only if you control a swamp. Crossway Troublemakers. What is this? Creature Vampire, 5-5 five, five for 6. Uh, attacking vampires you control have death touch and lifelink. Ooh. Whenever a vampire you control dies, you may pay two life if you do draw a card. Glass cast heart, artifact for three. Whenever one or more vampires you control attack, create a blood token. And for a black tap, pay one life. You get to create a 1-1 one, one white and black vampire creature token with lifelink. And for two black tap, sack this and 13 blood tokens. Each opponent loses 13 life and you gain 13 life. That's pretty brutal. Camber the Plunderer. I think this one was uh, getting up in price for a while there. Legendary Creature Vampire Rogue 3 4 for 4, and it partners with Laureen the Diversion. Interesting. When this creature enters battlefield, target player may put Laureen into their hand from their library, then shuffle. 
has lifelink. Whenever a creature and opponent control dies, you gain one life and create a blood token. Are we going to see Loreen up next? Nope. We've got Olivia's Wrath Sorcery for five. Each non-vampire creature gets negative X, negative X until end of turn, where X is the number of vampires you control. We've got the Predator's Hour. Sorcery for two and two end of turn creatures you control gain menace. And whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, it's on the top card of that player's library face down. You may look at and play that card for as long as it remains exiled. And you may spend mana as or mana of any color to cast that spell. We got the Shadow Grange Archfiend, creature demon 8 4 for 7. So when it enters the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices a creature with the greatest power among creatures they control. You gain life equal to the greatest power. Among creatures sacrificed this way, and it has madness for two and a black and paying eight life. We got Arterial Alchemy, Enchantment for three. When it enters battlefield, create a blood token for each opponent you have. Blood tokens you control are equipment in addition to their other types, and have equipped creature gets plus two plus zero and equipped two. Imposing Grandeur, Sorcery for five each player may discard their hand and draw cards equal to the greatest mana value. Of a commander they own on the battlefield or in the command zone. Aha, uh -huh, here we go. We got Laureen, the Diversion, the Drain Creature, Human Rogue, 3 3 for 3, partners with Camber, the Plunderer. So we saw that one earlier. First strike, tap, second artifact or creature, goad target creature. So that means until your next turn, that creature attacks each combat if able and attacks a player other than you if able. That's fun. We got a Markov Enforcer, Creature Vampire Soldier. 6-6, six, 4-6 six, six mana when it enters the battlefield, or another vampire enters the battlefield under your control. Markov Enforcer fights up to one target creature and opponent controls, and whenever a creature dealt damage by Markov Enforcer this turn dies, create a blood token. So we are absolutely cranking out the blood tokens with this deck. We've got a Midnight Arsonist Creature Vampire 3-2 for 4 when it enters the battlefield, destroy up to X target artifacts without mana abilities, where X is the number of vampires you control. Okay, so that's the first part of the deck. We'll pop over here, grab the rest. It's a little bit unwieldy to hold the whole thing. We've got Scion of Opulence, creature, vampire noble, 3-1 three, for 3. Whenever it or another non-token vampire you control dies, create a treasure token. And that means it's an artifact with tap, sack this artifact, you get to add one mana of any color. And for red, sacrifice two artifacts, it's on the top card of your library, you may play that card this turn. We've got the Sinister Waltz, Sorcery for 5. Choose three target creature cards in your graveyard, return two of them at random to the battlefield, and put the other on the bottom of your library. And one, the Ruin Sage, Legendary Creature Vampire Shaman, 4 3 for 5 at the beginning of your upkeep. Each player sacrifices a non vampire creature. Ooh, and a Mythic Bloodlord of Vazgoth, Creature Vampire Warrior, 3 3 for 5 with Bloodthirst 3. If an opponent was dealt damage this turn, this creature enters the battlefield with three plus one plus one counters on it. Has flying. Whenever you cast a vampire creature spell, it gains bloodthirst three. We've got the blood tracker creature vampire wizard two two for four with flying for a black pay two life. Put a plus one plus one counter on blood tracker. And when blood tracker leaves the battlefield, draw a card for each plus one plus one counter on it. Butcher of Malakir creature vampire warrior five four for seven with flying. Whenever it or another creature you control dies, each opponent sacrifices a creature. Champion of Dusk, I remember this one from Ixlan. Creature Vampire Knight, 4-4 four, four, for 5. When it enters the battlefield, you draw X cards and you lose X life, where X is the number of vampires you control. And we've got the Cordial Vampire. Creature Vampire, 1-1 one, one for 2. Whenever Cordial Vampire or another creature dies, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each vampire you control. I think that one was out of uh, Modern Horizons. Next up we got Damnable Pact, Sorcery for X and 2 black. Target player draws X cards and loses X life. Dark Imposter, Creature Vampire Assassin 2-2 two, two for 3. For 4, 2 black. Exile target creature and put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Dark Imposter. Dark Imposter has all activated abilities of all creature cards exiled with it. That's pretty crazy. We got a Malakir Blood Witch, Creature Vampire Shaman 445 with flying and protection from white. And when it enters battlefield, each opponent loses life equal to the number of vampires you control. You gain life equal to the life lost this way. And another mythic. We've got the Necropolis Regent, Creature Vampire 65, 
The six with flying whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, put that many plus one plus one counters on it. Another mythic! Whoa! Narcana Revenant. Creature Vampire Shade, 4-4 four, four for 6. Whenever you tap a Swamp for mana, add an additional black. And for 1 black, Nirvana Nerv 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 Revenant. Nirvana Revenant gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn. Patron of the Vein, Creature Vampire Shaman, 4-4 four, four for 6 with flying. When it enters battlefield, destroy a target creature and opponent controls. And whenever a creature and opponent controls dies, exile it and put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each vampire you control. Uh, this one, I think, was from Ixlan as well. We've got Sanctum Seeker, Creature Vampire Knight, 3 4 for 4. Whenever a vampire you control attacks, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Stromkirk Condemned, Creature Vampire Horror, 2 2 for 2. Discard a card, vampires you control get plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn, activate only once each turn. Underworld Connections, Enchantment Aura for 3, Enchant Land. The Enchanted Land has tap, pay one life, you get to draw a card. Anya's Ravager, Creature Vampire Berserker, 3-3 three, three for 3. Anya's Ravager attacks each combat if able one. Whenever Anya's Ravager attacks, discard your hand and draw 3 cards. Has Madness for 1 and a red. Avison's Judgment, Sorcery for 2. Madness for X and a red. Avison's Judgment deals 2 damage divided as you choose among any number of targets. If the spell's Madness cost was paid, it deals X damage divided as you choose among those permanents and or players instead. Blasphemous Act, Sorcery for 9, this spell costs 1 less cast for each creature on the battlefield, and it deals 13 damage to each creature. Bloodsworn Steward, Creature Vampire Knight, 4-4-4 four, four, four with Flying, Commander Creatures you control get, plus 2, plus 2, and have Haste. That's pretty versatile, if you're in red, I guess. Crimson Honor Guard, Creature Vampire Knight, 4-5 four, five for 5 with Trample. At the beginning of each player's end step, Crimson Honor Guard deals 4 damage to that player unless they control a Commander. We got a Falconrath Gorger Creature Vampire Berserker 2 1 for a single red. Each vampire creature card you own that isn't on the battlefield has madness. The madness cost is equal to its mana cost. Mob Rule Sorcery for 6. Choose 1. Gain control of all creatures with power 4 or greater until end of turn. Untap those creatures. Again, haste until end of turn. Or gain control of all creatures with power 3 or less until end of turn. Untap those creatures again, haste until end of turn. We got a Molten Echoes enchantment for four. As it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. I'm going to choose werewolves just for the heck of it. Whenever another, or whenever a non token creature of the chosen type enters the battlefield under your control, create a token that's copy of that creature. That token gains haste, exile it at the beginning of the next end step. And Stromko Occultist creature, vampire horror 3 2 for 3 with trample. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, exile the top card of your library until end of turn you may play that card. Has madness for one and a red. And vampiric dragon, that is an awesome combo. Creature vampire dragon, 5-5 five, five for 8 with flying. Whenever a creature deals damage by, or dealt damage by vampiric dragon this turn dies, put a plus one plus one counter on vampiric dragon. And for one and a red, it deals one damage to target creature. Okay, so that is the bulk of the deck. Now we're going to take a look at the lands over here. So we've got a bunch of non-basics and basics. We've got an exotic orchard. It's a land. Add one mana or tap to add one mana of any color that a land and opponent controls could produce. Next up, foreboding ruins. Another land enters battlefield. You may reveal a swamp or mountain card from your hand. If you don't, it enters battlefield tapped. Tap it for black or red. Another one for black and red, Shadow Blood Ridge. Smoldering Marsh, uh, another one for black or red, enters the battlefield, tap and to control two or more basic lands. Temple of Malice enters the battlefield, scry one, tap for black or red, and enters tapped again. Temple of the False God land, tap for two colors, activate only if you control five or more lands. Unclaimed territory as it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Tap for colorless or tap to add one mana of any color. Spend this mana only to cast a creature spell of the chosen type. You could use this in a bunch of other decks as well. And basic swamps. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14 of those. And mountains. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 of those. And the tokens here. So we've got the blood token, token artifact blood. Pay one, tap, discard a card. 
Sacrifice this artifact, you get to draw a card on the other side. We've got a Vampire 1-1 one, one with Lifelink, okay. So we're probably going to get a bunch of those, because we have a ton of Vampires and Blood. Oh, what's this? A Treasure Token. Token Artifact Treasure. Tap to sack this artifact. Add one mana of any colour. I like the artwork on that one as well. We've got a Blood Token here. The Eyeball again. Okay, uh, this one has a Bat on the other side. Just a 1-1 one, one Bat. Uh, blood, bat, blood and bat. And on your turn, so these are the parts of your turn. And popular magic formats. And if you're watching this video, Commander is probably your favourite. So that is the deck, Vampiric Bloodline. Leave a note in the comments, what do you think about this one? Goes for about 30 to 35 bucks US. And the deck box here should nicely hold a fully sleeved deck. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button for more Magic the Gathering unboxings. And be sure to tap the notification bell to be notified as soon as new videos are released. Stay tuned. We'll be taking a look at the other command deck for Crimson Vow. Hope everyone's staying safe and healthy out there. Thanks for watching and have a great day.